Now after the first 24 hours, we could then bring the temperature of the kiln up over 1,000 degrees. Now again, the thermometer on our chimney is only an indicator of the gases coming out of the chimney. It's not necessarily an accurate uh, reading of the temperature down inside the kiln. By the second night, we had our temperatures quite high, uh, well over 1,000 degrees. The night watch was one of the most difficult because the fires again had to be fed just like the daytime. Every 15 or 20 minutes, wood had to be thrown on and the fires had to be kept raging. In our kiln, for a little bit of experimentation, we put bituminous coal in the fire on the right. Uh, we did add some wood as well, but we shoveled quite a bit of coal into the uh, the kiln on the or the fire side on the right. We invited some local volunteers from the fire company to come by with a thermal imaging camera that reads infrared energy. And as you'll see here, the infrared camera shows the kiln in this photograph. You can see the three fires and it's peaking out at almost 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. We eventually had to replace our chimneys. Uh, here you see some metal chimneys billowing some smoke. I must, mo most of this smoke is from the bituminous coal that we were using. And as you can see, several days into it, the bricks in the back of the fire holes were literally glowing red hot. And that's what you wanted. You need your, your temperatures to get hot enough that you're actually going to end up with finished brick. Our thermometer eventually peaked out at what was approximately eight or 900 degrees and then the glass began to shatter and the needle melted and all the paint burned off of the thermometer. Now in many of Pennsylvania's early brickyards a small amount of salt was added to the fire and the reason they did that is that would actually waterproof some of the bricks and that would give them a slight glassy coating so that they could be used on the exterior walls. In addition we capped our chimneys with boards or later on some clay shards to try and minimize the amount of heat loss. And the heat just became so intense that our clay chimneys eventually started cracking and had to be replaced. Which allowed for a very rare peak down inside the belly of the kiln as you'll see here. We actually as we were replacing chimneys could look right directly down inside the kiln. And as you can see even during broad daylight the bricks were glowing red hot. We replaced the chimneys with some galvanized steel pipe, which again maintained the draw of hot air venting out the top, sucking in fresh oxygen in the bottom. On the fifth morning, the three fire doors were bricked shut and a small amount of dirt was shoveled on top of those bricks just to seal off any cold air getting in and the chimneys as you can see were sealed off as well with parts of the original clay chimney the reason we did this was to try and minimize the cooling you want it to be a slow cooling rate several days later after the kiln had cooled down we removed the top of the kiln removed several hundred bricks and as you see here, we're almost to the uh, bottom of the kiln at this point when this was filmed. The bricks on the inside, as you can see, are the same color as those fired bricks on the outside. In other words, they are finished bricks. And what was amazing is they still retained a tremendous amount of heat even three or four days after the kiln had been extinguished. Our 450 bricks in this case were then donated to the Danville Iron Heritage Festival and sold as a fundraiser for the festival. And here you can see our finished load on its way to the festival. And each brick was stamped IHF for the Iron Heritage Festival with the year 2009 on it. And as you see here, that black glaze, again, that's from that salt being added to the fire to give it a glaze.
And as you recall, we had four coins placed inside the kiln. The dime on the left bubbled. Next, the nickel sustained some damage. The penny was literally vaporized, and the quarter also baked quite intensely and some metal peeled off. Falls Creek Brick, Falls Creek Brick, spending my time laying Falls Creek Brick, snapping the mortar, put it on brick, be it some kind of light laying Falls Creek Brick. I picked German taters, I brewed Irish ale, spent years and years slagging Danville's T-Rail. Working was just money till I finally got it right now. It's a pensy brick house at the Falls Creek site. Falls Creek brick, Falls Creek brick. Spending my time laying Falls Creek brick. Slapping in the morning, put it on the brick. Oh, it's some kind of life laying Falls Creek brick. Wouldn't trade memories or jobs behind Wouldn't take another road to ease my mind If I could start over, oh, if I could I'd still be laying bricks in old Penn's woods Falls Creek Brick, Falls Creek Brick Spending my time laying Falls Creek Brick Slapping the mortar 